Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. finished uh, the gyro state, the satellite with uh, a rotating wheel or uh, one part of the satellite may be rotating. So, that we have called as the gyro state. Now, the satellite with the control moment gyros. So, this topic we are going to discuss, but uh, before that uh, we will discuss some of the mathematics from the previous uh, lecture means about the gyro state and that is very important for deriving the relationship. Uh, for of the satellite dynamics uh, under the motion of uh, control moment gyros. So, usually the control moment gyros uh, earlier also I have uh, talked about this. So, uh, control moment gyros it looks like we have a say frame here. And this we call as the gimbal axis for this frame, then we have another frame and there is a wheel. what we call as the rotor okay. and this is the rotor and from the center of this rotor this conduction goes back here and comes here in this place. So, this is another gimbal. So, this place we have uh, so at this point this is gimbal and here the gimbal is at this point and toward the back here and where I am showing this by a pink dot. So, this gimbal is basically if, uh, if you look into here in this gimbal, so it may look something like this. Say this is the outer one. So, this is the outer one. So, so there may be a motor attached to this. Instead of here looking like this, it may look like this and this axis may look something like usual. So, this motor may be responsible for rotating it or this motor may be not here, but this motor may be fixed to the this support only and this is attached to like this. Okay. So, as this motor is rotating, so this will rotate about this axis and this rotates by psi here. Okay. So, this motion we are showing by psi and uh, then there is also a motor about this point. Okay. So, if you look for the inner one which I have shown here by the pink color and uh, I will show the same thing here in this place. So, th this is usually fixed like this. So, if, if I instead of joining it here, if I do it like this and take the outer frame like this and to this outer frame there is a motor attached to this then this is this axle and this axle it is going like this. Okay, so, imagine this kind of situation. Okay, so, this is your the outer one outer frame and this is the inner frame and once this motor rotates. 
So, this will also rotate and uh, it will suppose it rotates about this axis. So, this will rotate and this rotation we show it by theta okay. and similarly your wheel is rotating. So, this wheel also the rotation of the wheel can be shown like this. So, this is rotating here y and this we can show it by phi. Okay. So, theta dot will be here in this direction, phi dot will be here in this direction and uh, psi dot will be here in this direction and phi dot will be here. The question arises, so what is the benefit of using such a control moment gyros on a satellite? So, the say we have a satellite here okay, and if from the ceiling of the satellite also this we call as the satellite bus. So, if I join this outer frame here and there is a motor here in this place itself. Okay. So, you can assume that this is rotating about this. So, what we can see that as a most simple case, if I have this rotor, okay, this is a rotor and if this is rotating about this axis and let us say that I show this rotor angular momentum by h. Okay. So, instead of speeding up this rotor, okay, what we do that I rotate it about this axis, I rotate the outer frame about this axis. Okay. Outer frame cannot rotate about any other axis because only the freedom is given about this axis. So, if it rotates means this h vector, so if using the motor here in this place, if using this motor, if I rotate this frame from this position to this frame position, it goes like this and this rotation here is by psi. Okay. So, this vector will change its direction, this is the angular momentum vector, so it will change its direction from this place to this place. So, this change of momentum it lies in the plane of the wheel. Okay. So, this is delta h. So, this delta h will lie here in this plane. So, as a consequence of the rotation about this axis, we are able to gen generate a change in momentum which is given by delta h and this delta h is the torque generated which acts along this axis because you know that uh, dh by dt, we have learned that this we are writing as m, the rate of change of angular momentum is, uh, uh, is given as the torque, this equal to torque. But this is not the only way of producing the torque. Here, if I apply this method that I change this h instead of rotating this angular vector from this position to this position, I start increasing the magnitude of this h means if I start building up suppose. So, I can produce a torque, if I change this, so a torque will be produced according to this scheme. If you apply m, so this will change dh by dt, is not it? So, this will change, but here in this case what happens and as a result you also get the reaction, but the problem with this method which is also applied for the reaction wheels. Okay, which uh, we have called uh, uh, as the gyro state also. In the gyro state, we especially there is only one rotating wheel either inside or it may be the outer part may be rotating here this part, there may be a wheel which is outside the satellite and this wheel is rotating and this is the stabilized platform, this is the non-rotating part. Okay. So, this mechanism we are going to discuss the control issues uh, once we are through with the theory. So, this is the last portion of the theory and uh, another one is remaining this uh, magnetic attitude control along with the uh, Lorentz force. These are the only two things remaining and once we, we are finishing it, so we will take a uh, few hours for covering the control issues and the related mechanism. So, what is the harm here in doing this? The problem is that you cannot apply large torque using this method 
and moreover the energy spent in this method using the applying the torque and speeding of the wheel energy is lost here in speeding of the wheel okay your energy is getting lost because of initially say the wheel is rotating at 2000 rpm or uh, okay or 6000 rpm something like this okay. and then you are speeding up to the 9000 rpm okay so you are accelerating it and as a consequence of this you get the reaction on the satellite and satellite gets reoriented along that particular axis however in doing so what we are doing that this wheel is speeding up from this speed to this speed okay so you know that the kinetic kinetic energy is given by 1 by 2 i omega square so that means your energy whatever the energy you have supplied to speed up the wheel that is getting lost in this wheel rotation because it has increased from 2000 to now 9000 rpm so this method of control this not only produces a small torque but also this consumes energy okay so to overcome this problem it is suggested that instead of doing this you do the other part that is use this h equal to m equal to if i rotate this vector at the rate say here it's a rotating at the rate psi dot okay and psi dot is the vector in this direction in the k direction so psi dot k cap this becomes omega and cross h so here your delta h is the change in the torque if i divide it by delta t so that gives you the torque generated isn't it the rate of change of angular momentum is the torque and what is delta h delta h is the quantity that we can write at delta h times this length okay this length times this angle so delta h times delta psi so th this is delta h by magnitude and if i divide it by delta t okay so what we get magnitude wise you can see from this place that we get as this delta h equal to h0 times delta psi or h times delta psi so what we see that this becomes h times delta psi is psi dot okay so this is what we are uh, i am writing here in this place now look from this place psi dot k okay and cross h h is suppose this is i uh, if i assume this to be the k direction so this is i direction and let us say this is the j direction so uh, what we can see the h is h times i cap okay and that becomes psi dot h times k times i is nothing but j cap so this is a torque along the j direction so this is magnitude wise this is what you are getting if we look magnitude wise okay so magnitude wise this is what we get h times psi dot so h h times psi dot is also here in this place so this implies here in this case i am not imparting any i am not speeding up the this rotor okay only by applying some small torque i am rotating it from this position to this position and as a result so uh, we forget about this because we are discussing about this figure so uh, this is not concerned with this this is only we are talking about the rotor so uh, here we can take up this figure so once we suppose we are not rotating here in this place this is not being rotated okay what we are doing that we are just rotating about this so the angular momentum vector which is along this direction so this will rotate from this place to this place okay this is the torque that gets generated here m and which is acting along the z direction so and for rotating it by side dot we apply a small torque about this axis okay so the applied the input axis is this we call in that case as the input axis okay. so as a result your output is 
along this direction. Okay, so torque will be available along this direction. Okay. So this way of producing a torque using a rotor wheel without speeding it up. Okay. So this we say as the control moment gyros. In the reaction wheel, we speed up the wheel itself. Okay. Here initially this is omega 0, later on it will be omega 1, afterwards it is omega 2, omega 3. So, the speed is increasing up here in this direction, it is increasing. While here the speed I am not increasing. So, using this property of the control moment gyros, large torque can be produced. Suppose, if h is very large in magnitude, okay, a wheel which is rotating at some 6000 rpm. Okay, if the wheel is rotating at this speed and this is a also a massive wheel, okay, so you can see that h will be quite high and then by applying certain psi dot about here in this place, we will be able to if we apply this psi dot, we will be able to generate a large torque along the j axis. So, about the j axis, the torque is produced. And that torque will be transferred to the satellite. Okay. Similarly, if we apply a torque, now say if, uh, it depends on how many gimbals you have. So, uh, let us consider the case that we have only one gimbal. This is the only one gimbal. This is rotating about this axis. And then you are rotating about this by psi dot. So, if this wheel is spinning about this axis, this is the axis about which it is spinning. So, h here is in this direction. So, you can see that this h will go inside. Okay. And the torque produced will be along this direction. Okay. Because this frame is fixed in the satellite. Okay. So, in that case, a torque will be directly produced along this axis. And that torque is being tolerated by the satellite. So, the satellite orientation will start changing. So, this type of technique, uh, it is used for large satellites like the space station and others, where the small wheels will not work. And uh, this is also energy efficient. As we, I have told you that here you are not speeding up the wheel. So, energy is not getting lost in speeding of the wheel, only a small energy you have to spend about this axis. And as a result, you are getting the last torque about the other axis. Okay. And therefore, this system is energy efficient, while the reaction wheel system is not energy efficient be because it is consuming energy in speeding up itself. Okay, so, we will discuss of the uh, mechanism uh, of this control moment gyros further. So, this is just an introduction and uh, what today I want to do that uh, we have been discussing about the um, gyro state. Okay, so, in that context, we were discussing few concepts and uh, I told you that uh, either I will set this as an uh, assignment or I will uh, give you uh, as an uh, supplementary material, but I want to discuss it uh, today itself, so that that concept can be utilized for the control moment gyros also. Okay, so, uh, in a satellite, 
this is 1, 2 and the 3 axis and somewhere a rotor wheel was there and if rotor wheel is aligned with some of the axis means the rotor instead of rotor wheel being here in this place, if the rotor wheel is located on this axis itself then the things get simplified okay. and O is also the this is the center of mass this point. Okay. So, that in the uh, moment equation the V 0 cross P term we were getting that will be vanishing okay. and uh, your equation of motion then looks like d h by d t this equal to m. Otherwise, we have the extra term V 0 cross P if O does not coincide with the center of mass. So, in this context uh, I wanted to discuss few things. Okay, let us write. So, what we have earlier done that we have a rotor and this is the A axis in this direction and it is rotating about this axis. So, for this the torque about the A axis we write as M A and suppose we make the free body diagram of the this satellite. So, free body diagram here there is a hollow, this is a hollow and uh, your rotor comes here in this place. And how we have modeled? We have applied a torque on this M W on the wheel due to the main body. So, this is the main body and this is the wheel. So, here this is the main body B and this is your wheel. Okay. So, if we consider independently this part, so we can write M W B M A the torque along this axis okay, that we can write as E A cap, it is the same as E dot A times M W B and the same torque also if this is acting here in this direction. So, this will here an opposite torque will be applied here in this place. So, M W B will act on the satellite, but these are the internal torques and the forces. So, they occur in pair and they cancel each other. So, therefore, such a system if no external force is acting on this, this system or external torque is acting on this system. Okay. So, once we write the equation of motion, so th this is d h by d t equal to m. Okay. If m this is the external phone, this is 0. So, only we get here h as a constant. So, for such kind of a system the total angular momentum will remain constant if there is no external torque, but in, in the case of the satellite this does not happen because there will be a torque from the aerodynamic forces torque due to the solar radiation. Okay, there can be uh, uh, however, those uh, uh, things can be modeled as a periodic and constant terms. So, th those are different issues. Then uh, if it is free from the torque then we have the gravity gradient torque. Okay. So, the m external if in the it is in the lower orbit. So, you cannot avoid it gravity gradient torque will be there. Uh, the only way to avoid it is that the satellite is a spherical in the shape. Okay. In that case you will not have any gravity gradient torque. So, uh, we are discussing about this part. So, this is M W B, uh, this is the moment about the axis A. in a passive system this M A will be the friction force or the friction torque for a passive system means there is no motor inside this or motor is switched off. Okay. 
So, whatever the friction is acting between the bearing and this axle that is the torque available. So, that is the friction torque. In an active system, this M A is provided by a motor. So, H A we can write as also E A cap times angular momentum of the wheel. Remember this is the absolute angular momentum, absolute angular momentum of the wheel, because we are discussing about this figure. Okay. This is the free body diagram, this is the free body diagram. This is also a free body diagram. So, we can write it in this way and as we know that this H w can be written as this is the absolute angular momentum absolute angular momentum of the wheel. Uh, absolute angular velocity of the wheel. And I is obviously the inertia diadic. So, this omega speed of the wheel we have written as this we can expand and omega s spin as we know this quantity is nothing but omega s times E a cap as per our earlier discussion. So, this gets reduced to Moreover, if you remember that in your assignment also this appeared this uh, I double bar this is the inertia diadic this we have written as I t times E double bar this unit diadic plus I s minus I t times E a cap E a cap. Okay, this is the inertia moment of inertia of the wheel or the inertia diadic of the wheel. Now, if we insert here in this place, why I am doing this exercise because the satellite control anyway many people from the electrical engineering they may be working, okay. but understanding the physics of the system it is a totally different. Okay. You are given a is equation and you know about the controls you can apply to the system and you can produce the result Okay, this is happening that is happening, but without much knowledge about the behavior of the system this behavior of the system until unless we go through the physics and the proper mathematics in a systematic way, we never learn the system behavior. Okay. 
So, there is a difference between doing the controls of the satellite, somebody is doing the controls of the aircraft, but no knowledge of the aircraft system or either how the aircraft behaves. It is just given that these are the ailerons, rudders and uh, 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 say the uh, elevator, the, these are the three primary control surfaces on the aircraft. So, you can use them to uh, control the aircraft. Okay. Somebody can give the control engineer one equation, okay, do this and uh, this is the result I am looking for. Yeah, my aircraft should behave like this. So, the control person he is not knowing about much about the system dynamics, about the uh, aircraft behavior, how it is designed, uh, what are the factors which will affect it. Okay. So, only through the person who is designing the aircraft, who is aware of the aircraft the dynamics and also he is aware of the controls, he can do such things that the aircraft design, okay, my aircraft will behave like this, okay, if this is done. So, it is a very important that we learn the dynamics of the system and then we do the controls. Here, this uh, in this course, we are not going to do the controls any more extensively because we have only two weeks left, left including this, we are running for the last 11th week and then there will be one more week. So, but I will try to cover some of the control issues, the control block diagram, how to do that and thereafter the problems are to be solved using the MATLAB. We cannot do it using the, there is the hand calculation. Okay. So, there is no meaning to discuss the proper controls and uh, all those things and seeing the number of lectures limited. So, we will confine of ourselves to the certain ideas which we get from the block diagram and how the system is going to behave. Okay. So, in that context, uh, I am working this so that you understand what we are really doing. Okay. So, here this we can write as, as we can see from this place, this is the unidiadic. So, we get here i t times c a cap plus i s minus i t times e a cap dot e a cap, this becomes 1, this is e a cap and then dot omega plus the same thing we have to do here in this place, but on this side here we are missing this part omega s times e a cap, while the here it is omega, here in this place this is this quantity is nothing but omega s vector. So, doing the same exercise here, we get here i t times e a cap plus i s minus i t times e a cap dot e a cap that becomes 1 times omega s times e a cap. So, as we see this is i t and i t here. So, that term cancels out and we get i s times e a cap dot omega and plus. Similarly, here in this place we get here i s times e a cap dot omega s times e a cap. So, this gives you i s times omega s. So, therefore, this is uh, here we have to do the modification, this is we have taking the dot product and therefore, this is the scalar here. Okay. So, therefore, our H A this becomes I s E A dot omega plus I s times omega s. this is angular momentum along the spin axis.
now this ha which we are writing as ea dot hw okay so ha dot this quantity we can write as differentiating this and this quantity will be nothing but omega cross ea cap this is cap here let us write this as cap we are using cap here i want to tell you something very important okay that's why i am doing this exercise uh, you will come to know what the and remember what we are doing here okay. so ea is a vector ea cap is a vector inside the satellite and this satellite this is the 1 2 and the 3 axis and this satellite is rotating at the angular velocity of omega therefore this ea vector will also rotate okay so ea dot ea cap dot it's a given by omega cross ea this is the standard thing we have already done now h a dot so therefore we can write as omega cross e cap a and this is i double bar dot omega w because this is also a vector and what this quantity will be h w dot h w dot this is nothing but the torque acting on the wheel which is coming from the body okay m w v okay so this quantity we can replace this as m w v in the next step we do little bit modification so we could have done at this stage itself rather than expanding let me remove this and first do that part so i because this a triple dot product or we call as the vector triple product so if, uh, <coughs> no vector triple product is different a cross b cross c this we call as the vector triple product and dot triple product we write as a dot b cross c okay so uh, using this particular notation ea cap cross hw we change okay this is the property of the dot product so we uh, put it here in this format so this quantity then this is if you look back we have defined this as the mwb dot ea cap equal to ma okay so we replace this as ma this is a scalar okay and this is ha dot and here we get omega dot ea cap cross hw okay now this quantity we have to work on and see how much this quantity turns out to be so we have omega dot ea cap cross i double bar dot h w is nothing but i double bar dot w w means the absolute angular velocity of the wheel absolute angular velocity 
of d angle. We need to expand this part. We need to work out both these parts separately. So, this is omega dot E a cross i t somewhere let us write here in this place. This is i t a once we expand it. So, this is E double bar dot omega w and plus E a cap cross E a crap this part will drop out this 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 is the cross product here so this will be zero so that part drops out so we drop that here itself so this gets reduced into this format now this is the unit dyadic so this term can be reduced as omega dot times it times E a cap cross omega w. And we need to work out this part. So, we are just looking at this particular part which is written here in this place. Omega w is nothing but omega plus omega s and therefore, omega dot i t we can take it outside this becomes E a cap cross omega and plus E a cap cross omega s and E a cap cross omega s we have written as omega s times C a cap because this is the angular velocity vector along the a axis. This is with respect to the body axis. This omega s is the spin angular velocity. So, this is spin angular velocity and is with respect to the body axis. Okay, so, therefore, this part will be 0 and what we get here the i t times omega dot E a cap cross omega okay. and you know that we can write this as E a cap cross omega dot omega this can be exchanged and thereafter we do a final change here omega cross omega. So, this quantity is 0. So, that means this quantity this turns out to be 0. So, this implies this quantity s dot becomes equal to m a. So, m a is the torque applied along the a axis. So, this is the a axis and total torque suppose we say applied here it lies here in this direction this is the torque m w b okay, which also we I have shown it like this. 
but in the vector notation you can show it like this. So, it is component along this direction this is m a. So, that m a is responsible for changing the angular, moment, angular momentum of the this rotor about this a axis. Okay, so, uh, so these results will be important while we uh, discuss further. So, we will continue in the next lecture.